Hi foxes and welcome back to my channel or if this is your first time here, hello. My name is Brittany and I'm also known as Shaw Foxborough and I talk about vintage clothing primarily and um, selling on different platforms like Etsy, Poshmark, um, a little bit on eBay but not really and thrilling and this is actually a what sold video so I'm going to walk you through everything that sold for me in the month of January, uh, talk a little bit about it, um, if it's something I wouldn't pick up again or there's some weird story behind it, I might give you that information, um, but basically just trying to help you become a better buyer when you're out and about um, and sourcing for your own business. So if you are into vintage and um, I do sell modern as well, but primarily I sell vintage and um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and dive right in. What I'm gonna do is the same thing I did last time, which is a um, sort of, uh, I'm recording up here on my camera and then I'm going to do a screen recording on my laptop so that you're able to see uh, what I'm talking about um, as I go through. And that way it's just easier for me to edit and <laughs> easy for you to see all of the details um, of what I'm selling. So, <clears throat> my kids are watching Encanto. Hopefully they let me be for a little bit. Um, I do have a cold. Sorry if I sound weird. I've got my coffee. So let's go ahead and dive into this. I'm going to set up my screen record. Okay, so the first thing that I sold, these are going to be my Etsy sales. We're going to go over Etsy first because Etsy did the best for me last month. I think I did um, a little over 1600 on Etsy um, in January. So I'm going to walk you through what I sold and I did have a couple of returns so I'll show you those and um, yeah. So the first thing is I've been selling a decent number of books. One of my goals for this year is to um, sell even more books. So um, yeah, I've been picking them up when I see them. I found this lot that someone had donated at the Goodwill Outlet, which books are 20 cents a pound. You really cannot beat that um, of like embroidery and cross stitching books. So this was one of those books. It was the book of samplers. And a lot of times people will have the same book that I have listed for less money. But because I take pictures of the actual individual book, because I've got all of the tags in there that can help lead someone to the book um, who might be searching in a vague sense and not know that they need that exact book. I tend to sell at the price that I'm asking. So this one I priced at $25.99 and that one did sell. This was my last sale of the month. So we're going um, from the end of the month back to the beginning of the month. Yep, so just a book. And um, the next thing was another book. This was a book that actually it sold to someone who saw it on my Instagram because I posted about it until the same day that I listed it. I paid $8 for this um, at an antique market. It was in a little bit of rough shape, but uh, who doesn't love Black Beauty? And um, I did some research on this one on like the publication date and all of that information and it was just a very I love the spine of this book it's very pretty so that one sold for $35.99 and then I would not recommend picking this up I think I've had this for like two years and it's just kind of one of those things that like it keeps auto renewing in my Etsy shop and I haven't like purged it and donated it or whatever so um someone bought it from Nashville so I guess they just um, wanted it and uh, they paid $13.99 plus $10 I think in shipping um, so don't really recommend that I've had that for a really long time I'm from Tennessee so I probably bought it because I was from Tennessee and um, yeah this was one of my old mangas I went ahead and cleaned out a lot of my manga collection and this is FLCL or Fooly Cooly. Um, and I only have the first volume, I didn't have the second volume, so I went ahead and listed this one. It's out of print, um, but it sold for $22.99 and it sold pretty quickly. I would 
say within a week, maybe two weeks of sell of listing it uh, for $22.99. So this I was also surprised sold, um, and I was surprised it sold so quickly. There were other ones listed on Etsy. I did take a nice bright picture of it, um, good tags, but it sold for $22.99, which was I think a little bit more than the cheapest one and a little bit less than the most expensive one. And it was just some sheet music. Uh, my husband's um, grandparents were musicians, so it was theirs. It was just floating around my house and um, I wanted to get rid of it. So <laughs> just it sold in like two days or something like that. I was kind of shocked. This, I was not shocked at all that it sold quickly. I had three um, vintage belts with like the, the lion, the door knocker lion, um, and two of them were Anne Klein. And this one was not marked Anne Klein, but it was by the same maker who made one of the other Anne Klein belts, and it was also sold at Bonwit Teller. Um, so possible that it was like a knockoff, but I think it was just an unmarked Anne Klein belt. Um, anyway, the other two sold very quickly. They sold for this price, $55.99. So I listed this one for the same price. It also sold within, I think, two days. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was a little bit beat up, but if you see these lion head belts, I mean, all of them sold super quickly. So I, I can't recommend enough to, um, you know, pick them up. And I think Versace also kind of has like a motif that looks like this. So I don't know if people are looking for it in that element as well. These buttons I found in a bin, at the bins, in like a little baggie, um, with a couple of other little gold tone buttons or gold metal buttons, and I used those to repair something. But these buttons I bought to resell, not a huge money maker. Um, they're on sale now, but the ones that I sold, sold for $2.25. I actually have nine of them. And I sold all nine of them, and then that sale, some it got canceled uh, by Etsy. I'm not really sure why. And the, I think there was a payment processing issue, and then someone came in and they bought five of them. So um, I have sold five of them. Again, not a huge money maker, but that and Klein, like it's bringing in a lot of attention to my my shop. So um, I still have four of those left. This bowl, I can't remember. I, I got it at the thrift store, not the bins. I think I paid like three or four dollars for it. Um, I just sort of liked it. I don't know, a small little bowl has like a dragon around the edge. Here's the tail end of the dragon. Let's see if I have a, here's the head of the dragon. Um, anyway, I just thought it was neat and I, I don't, know exactly what it was originally used for. Did a little bit of research. I think it's from the 1940s. Um, it was marked China on the bottom and I thought it'd be like a good incense or a, a catch-all bowl, you know, for keys by the door. I do know that they are, uh, that the motifs and the the words inside, it's supposed to bring good luck. Um, so it's like a fortune bowl, uh, but that sold for $25.99. And, um, yeah. This was one that got returned. Um, it sold for full asking price, but the buyer didn't like that the in so vintage dresses, a lot of times the internal seams, they wouldn't have been surged, they would have been pinked. And then over the years, the the fabric inside can fray. Um, and she thought that it looked like it was not going to hold up. So um, I take returns for any reason, whether it be a fit or um, they just don't like it or the, the color didn't look like it did on the screen, like it doesn't matter. Um, so as long as I am, like I was confident that uh, she didn't damage the dress, uh, it was just like that. So I approved the return and it is on its way back to me. So it will be relisted, but um, it's very pretty, is very pretty. 
um, and it fits like kind of like a large extra large which is a nice size so it'll be fine to get it back we're coming into like the spring season when this kind of colorway will be popular um, and yeah I'm sure it'll sell again so that was a return this is something I grab from the bins I believe I've got a top a fitted sheet and this pillowcase um, and the pillowcase sold for $14.99 I've already sold the top sheet or the fitted sheet yes this sold and was returned and then surprisingly sold again after Christmas so this is a vintage Talbot sweater um, sold for $45.99, kind of like a combination of like Nordic and Christmas. I thought it was pretty. Um, the original person who bought it didn't realize it was a petite, uh, even though it says it on the tag and I provide measurements, but um, yes, so $45.99 on that one. This was a tin that I picked up at the Goodwill bins. I just liked it because it was Snow White. Um, I find that almost anything Disney does pretty well uh, and let's see did it have oh yeah it was that candy jar mix I don't know when this was from probably the 80s something 80s or 90s something like that it was a bit dinged up too uh, but just just cute and there were other ones out there again listed on Etsy I don't know if it's my pictures, I don't know if it's my tags, but consistently I find that people tend to buy my items instead of the same thing from other people. So this one sold pretty quickly as well uh, for $19.99. This took a while to sell. <laughs> this is a handmade um, knit vest that I purchased at an estate sale from a very prolific knitter. Everybody bought all of her other clothes, but no one wanted her knitting, I guess, so I bought all of it. And um, this, I think I have one piece left. So most of it I took to my booth, sold very quickly. Some of it I listed online. Um, almost all of it is gone. This piece and one other piece um, were like the last stragglers. And this one sold in a bundle of three items with another item that came from that knitter's estate sale. So this was just a knit vest with like little toggles on the front and it had a belt that tied um and i love the color and then this skirt so this knit skirt it had like elastic in the waistband but it wasn't sewn on it was like knitted in it was very interesting but um still a cool skirt everyone loves a good knit skirt in the winter $44.99 on that one and then um, they bought this ship and shore purple blouse to go with it which was very cute and did not fit me which is why I am holding flowers in that picture <laughs> it's too small so next up this was kind of like a big back and forth like this woman she like really wanted this planter and she was trying to find it she had like found another one um but then the husband had listed it um without the wife's permission and so then uh i don't know what happened but anyway she couldn't buy that one and then she was just upset because the shipping on it was so much it was like reading to her as 60 dollars to ship um which that is a ton of money don't get me wrong um so we ended, we ended up going back and forth and it was the dimensions because of UPS's like dimensional sizing. And so I ended up putting it in for UPS ground shipping so that it could be shipped with ground because that was um, much cheaper. So as uh, soon as I did that, I let her know and she bought it right away and then she left me very um, pleased feedback. So I was glad that this person who uh, really wanted this planter ended up getting it because when I bought it I it's like it's kind of weird it's all metal I bought it against my better judgment knowing that I would have to ship it um, but I just couldn't leave it behind <laughs> so um, it did it did sell and the person who got it really loves it so that makes me happy it's worth it 
this was another fun sale. This was, it sold to someone who has purchased from me before. I posted on Instagram, like if you are wearing something from my shop today, send me a picture and I'll give you a $10 uh, discount code to my shop you can use on anything. And so she was and she did and so I sent her a discount code and she was like, I've been eyeing these shorts so I'm really excited. So she left me really nice feedback on those and it was fun to sell to a repeat customer. And those sold for $37.99 minus the 10 that I gave her as a discount. I picked up four skeins of vintage uh, wool from the bins because I mean it's very lightweight, you know, and I just wanted to save it. And so this was one of the skeins. They were all different colors, so it's not like one knitter would buy all four skeins, you know, to make a project. It was like, you have to be making like a small project, like a hat or a scarf or something like that. Um, but I have one skein left. Three of them have sold and they all sold for $9.99. So I just thought that it was very pretty vintage yarn. It's like from the seventies. And oops, here we go. These pants came from, um, I have a video for this, but I went to the Goodwill bins one day and I was with my son and it was literally like an entire bin almost full of like 1970s like pants in crazy colors and 1980s like pants in crazy colors and 70s shirts and sweaters and just like really good stuff and my son really wanted to go home so I just literally like loaded it all in my cart and just took it with me. I didn't look it over. Um, and most of it was fine. A couple pieces I had to get rid of but this is one of the things that um, was in that haul. A pair of peach little uh, <laughs> high rise trousers and those sold for $45.99. I didn't run any sales in January so um, at least not on clothing. This Laura Ashley blouse was, um, I don't know, was it linen? Yeah, it was 100% linen. And this sold for $58.99. <coughs> the Laura Ashley tag was, it was like, it didn't have an actual tag in the back of the neck. It was just like a little embroidered circle um, that said Laura Ashley. So I don't know, I thought it was really pretty, very classic little piece. It has this like little detail down the front placket and um, it took a little bit to sell, I think because I had priced it a little bit higher, but uh, it did sell for full asking price. This was a pair of twist waist trousers. Don't remember where I got these or how much I paid for them, but uh, they sold for $33.99. This two-piece set was a skirt and a top and I had to do a lot of research on this because the color or the um the construction was very clearly very old um like it had snaps up the side and like hook and eye closures and then these buttons um but the fabric and the style I felt was a little bit more 1950s um, so I had to do all this research and um, ended up concluding that it was actually a 1930s piece. A little bit rare for its time. It was the softest, softest gauzy cotton, beautiful like lace trim all over it with like the crochet. Tr it was just really pretty um, and very nicely made um, by probably a home seamstress, although Maybe it was purchased. I, I just, I don't know. Uh, but this one sold for $224.99. And um, interestingly enough, I learned that this paisley like bandana style print didn't really um, come into production until the 1930s. So if you find like that bandana style print, uh, most likely it's not older than that. So that was very interesting for me. Certain colorways in particular were like the first to be released and then gradually more colorways. 
This I was kind of surprised sold as quickly as it did. This is a ring that I don't even remember where I got it, but I really liked it. So I kept it for a really long time. Um, it's, it was kind of like hollow and it had like a little bell inside of it. And so it always jingle when you walk and I liked to wear it. And um, it was like just kind of crudely made and just weird. And I didn't know where it came from or who made it or what era it was from. Um, but someone else liked it as much as I did, I guess. And I priced it at 25 and um, yeah, someone bought it. So it's a cool little piece of like, I don't know, folk jewelry, I guess. Uh, this I was so glad to see sell. I've had this for a really long time and I expected it to sell really quickly when I listed it. But something about it, everybody kept looking at it, but people weren't buying it. So I don't know if it's because it was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. It, it had a good bust measurement. It didn't have any stains. I, I am not sure, but it took forever to sell like for over a year, I think. And it did finally sell for $38.99. So. These were also a return. The person didn't quite like how they fit, so they are back up for sale. Uh, but they did originally sell for $54.99. It's just that I have a sale going in my Etsy shop right now. So, um, yeah. Next up was this blouse. Uh, they loved it, left five star feedback for that, but it was just a really pretty like 1960s little embroidered top with like a big like Peter Pan style collar. Like late, late 1960s, like we're almost to the 70s, but um, very cute. It had this in PC fashions or whatever it says there, but in PC it makes me laugh because it always reminds me of video games because it means non-player character. Um, anyway, that's a side note. It sold for $45.99 and someone really loved it. They left me good feedback. This book I had listed for quite a while but I knew someone would come in and buy it. Uh, this sold for $18.99 and it was from the 90s. It was a cool little book. My kids liked it. We read it. Um, it has these little like pop-ups and lift the flaps and stuff like that and um, it was in pretty decent shape so that one sold for $18.99. I'll tell you what, when your kid really latches on to like one movie or one show and it's something that they don't make a lot of merchandise for anymore, uh, you get really tired of reading the same books over and over so you'll kind of pay like a decent amount of money to get new stuff. So. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's only because I had kids that I, you know, know that, but this top I really liked. I loved the like dagger collar with the little like trim around the edge. It also had a pocket. Let's see if I've got, there we go. The cool little pocket. Um, and then like a triple button, like asymmetrical cuff, which I thought was pretty cool. Here I show it with just the collar sticking out. Um, that one did sell for $38.99 and I don't remember if I got that at an, I think I, mm, I want to say I picked it up at a Goodwill, but I'm not, I don't remember. This linen midi skirt was beautiful. Um, kind of like early, early 2000s, late 90s. It was um, just really pretty and nicely made and um, I guess I don't really have too much more to say about that but it sold for $65.99 and sold within like a month I think. These were a consignment item for my friend Christina. She sent me, um, she sent me two boxes of consignment and then she just sent me a third box but this was from the first box that she sent me and she had a bunch of 
40s um, maternity dresses. There were like four of them. They needed a little bit of love to be brought back to life, but somebody, they've been very popular in my shop. They're very rare um, and they're a bigger size. So pretty cool. Um, this one was a, like a robin's egg blue. Let's see if I can, here's the label. See, it says Mary and Sue maternity. It has these little like snaps on the side. So when you're in your, you know, first, second trimester, you can, you know, do the little snaps on the side. And then as your belly grows, then you undo the snaps. And um, it's just comfortable for moving around. It was cotton um, with like these black button details on the front. The only downside to these, and I wish um, that it was a little different, but they're not nursing friendly. So you can't really wear them postpartum. It's definitely just for maternity. So that one sold for $129.99. And then this one also sold. This was $149.99. Um, I loved the plaid on this. I didn't like the shape, like the neckline. I thought it was too matronly. Um, but someone liked it and it has like the dolman sleeves and kind of like a western look to it. Again, it has the snaps on the sides. It had the tie waist. This one had pockets, which was really nice. Um, and then a snap at the back of the neck. So I did um, pad my dress form to show how it would fit if you had like a second trimester bump. Um, just because I think that that helps like show you the fit rather than it just being like on a non-pregnant body. So I did take the time to do that for these dresses because I wanted to price them higher. So this is a Mary and Sue, another Mary and Sue um, maternity dress. So I still have two of those left in my Etsy shop. Uh, I do a 50-50 split with her. So after the fees are taken out, I split 50-50 down the middle with her. The Unless I have to do a bunch of repairs, um, and then I do 40-60. So <laughs> depends on how much time I have to put into it. Uh, this is a, another manga out of print, um, got a lot of attention, sold very quickly, $25.99. This one, um, it's just like a little duck romper, somebody bought it for their son, very cute, $19.99. Uh, oops, shoot, I don't know what that was, but, okay got very good feedback on this the person who loved it uh, bought it loved it and it's just a black sweater from the 1950s 60s and very like got that sweater girl shape with a very tapered in waist and like bigger in the bust um that sold for 38.99 and that one i got at my favorite little vintage shop um, where we go to the lake um i only go there during the summer so, but I got a bunch of, um, these like nylon sweaters, I guess the, the lady who runs the shop, she does like state clean outs and she saved a ton of these, like, um, it was like this, all this vintage workwear from like the fifties and sixties and it was very cool and I bought almost all of it. So this I had for a really long time. It was a, a little pleated skirt. I thought it was very cute, but I took literally like two years to sell, I think. Uh, it was Liz Claiborne, polyester. I don't know. Did sell for $28.99, so that's good at least. But uh, This scarf sold for $28.99 uh, in a bundle with that skirt. And I was very happy to move both of them. I probably got this scarf at the bins. I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and then another one of those needlework books. This one sold for $15.99. So that was my Etsy sales for the month. I had two returns. I had two consignment items. Um, and I had a lot of things that I listed and sold very quickly after listing. So, uh, yeah, about 1600 But if you take out the returns that I had, I would end the consignment cut. I'm going to say my sales realistically were more like 
hundred on Etsy and that would be before. Okay, I feel like I've been talking for quite a while. So we are going to try and speed through some of these um, Poshmark sales. It was not a good month on Poshmark. I think I sold like under $700 worth of stuff. Um, aside from having a reseller assistant share my closet and send out 10% offers, I really did not do much. So the fact that it was not a good month does not surprise me at all. Um, Canto has lost its charm. Please hold. Okay, the music had shut off. I mean, the movie had shut off. And it was in the middle of We Don't Talk About Bruno, so obviously we were very upset about it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. <coughs> yeah, so Poshmark, not great. Um, I've been doing more work this month, already seeing some improvement. So uh, I sold this Madewell top. This came from the bins in Jackson, Mississippi when I went to visit my mom. She found it for me, sold for $21, and probably almost all of these had a shipping discount. Um, so we'll just assume that everything is minus a dollar fifty. So twenty-one dollars minus dollar fifty. All right. So these I bought from B and G Trading Company. Why is it not working? There we go. I bought like a lot of um, key sunglasses, and um, I sold pretty much all. Well, all of them, but this pair came broken. The um, pin had come unscrewed and I had to buy a glasses repair kit because I needed to fix these and something else. It took forever for me to do it, finally did it, popped the listing up, sold in a couple of days. I took a, uh, I think I had them listed for 60 I took a $40 offer because I thought they were hideous. <laughs> so <laughs> I was happy to sell them for $40 because they've been sitting on my desk for like a year and I didn't want them there anymore. So this was mine, mod cloth dress, very pretty, little flower kind of like notebook print with little like written words. Um, wasn't gonna fit me again. So I had this one listed at 60, I think, and it sold for 45. Okay, stuff keeps going wrong. My memory card was full. I don't know where I left off. These anthropology shorts, I would not buy again unless I, they were out, I got the bins, but they were mine, so I sold them. Uh, these shoes I got at the bins, they were nice looking shoes, real leather suede, uh, but they were Sonoma, so they took a really long time to sell, but they did end up selling for full asking price of $34, randomly. This half slip was, I think mine maybe? a little too long or something. I don't know. I listed it for $12 and someone bought it for $10. These uh, I picked up at the bins thinking that maybe I could fix up all of the scuffs and damage, um, but they were patent leather and I was not able to find any tricks to get the scuffs and marks off of them. Um, they were cute. If they had been my size, I probably would have kept them, but, um, I will now not pick up patent leather that has, like, ink transfer and stuff like that because I just can't get it off. So, if you have any tips for that, leave them down below, but these ended up selling for $22 after a very long time. Oh, boy. These boots also sold after a very long time. I got these at the bins, but they had this little like mark on them. Honestly, I probably should have taken sandpaper to the suede and tried to get that mark off, um, but I didn't. And then I never wanted to go back and mess with them. So I ended up selling them for $10 and they've been in my Poshmark closet for like two years and I'm very excited that they're gone. So Next was this Tommy Bahama linen top. Got this at the bins, some men's, extra large. One of them sold on eBay very quickly. That was the darker blue one. The light blue one sold on Poshmark. 
got it listed for 25 or something like that and someone bought it for 23 so not bad um this came in like a wholesale lot i should have probably just scrapped it but i did take some cute pictures of it i did get a lot of attention but it took a really long time to sell and it sold for 24 dollars so not really worth my time to model it um and measure it and all of that stuff uh, this was a satin robe. This also had some issues that I thought that I could get out, I think, when I bought it. Um, I think I got it from the bins. Anyway, um, I wasn't able to spot treat it as well as I had wanted, and um, so it only sold for $27. And this sweatshirt, which I thought would do all right, took a while to sell. This was a size 3X. I listed it last year during like peak, you know, stay at home loungewear sort of time, but it didn't sell. It was a 3X by the brand Wound Up. It says no plans, it's my plans. And um, I thought it was funny, but it did actually end up selling for full asking price of $29. So. I don't know. This was a blazer from my Stitch Fix palette. It was in a 1X by 41 Hawthorne and this sold for a full asking price of $45. This was a <laughs> toy that I bought for my kids. Uh, I think last year or the year before when I was trying to teach them about the nativity. We are not especially religious but we do celebrate Christmas and I was trying to teach them about where Christmas originated from, the meaning of Christmas, and the birth of Jesus, and um, I just thought it would be a little bit better if we had some Fisher-Price action figures to go with it that we could kind of act it out. Um, we lost one of the wise men. I did end up finding the donkey, but it sold for $13. If you had the complete set, these actually can sell for a pretty decent amount, so um, I was surprised because I only paid $10 for it, but I don't know if maybe the supply chain or it's just you know how fisher price changes their little people every couple of years and so the little people farm is like different every couple of years well maybe that's the same thing with the little people nativity set i don't know uh it did sell quickly though and after christmas so i don't know this sold for full asking price this was uh, my t-shirt so no bad days um I've been trying something out where if something is just like a t-shirt or a sweater or just something that you I feel like you don't really need measurements for like it's just it's a men's t-shirt size medium you don't need measurements for that right so I've been not putting them in and um, I've only done that for a few things but so far it seems to be okay and um, this did sell for full asking price of $15 so this took a while to sell. This was a little vintage polka dot tank top. It was a back button. Um, on the medium to large size, I would say, and it was green and white polka dots. And that sold for 35 This was one of my old mod cloth t-shirts. I sized up, and that was a mistake. It was ginormous on me. I wore it as a nightshirt for quite a while, um, but eventually I just wanted to purge it and someone bought it for 12 bucks. These Ugg Kulabura slides I bought for myself from Evalia. She was having a sale and um, they were new in the box at the time. I bought them, wore them a little bit, and then decided they weren't for me and I sold them for $34. So. Next was this Stitch Fix top. This came in my palette, said Good Vibes. It's by Nine Britain, um, and it was size large. Sold for 26 These gloves, very cute. I listed these not 2021 Christmas, but 2020. 2020 Christmas? 20, I don't know. It was a while ago. Anyway, my, la my Christmas collection, like, two years ago. And they finally sold for $25, um, but I just thought they were so pretty with the little beaded bows. 
then this Stitch Fix top sold. This was in my palette, kind of plain, uh, sold for $21. I think my kids are coming back down the stairs. This Gianni Beanie knit top sold. This came from the Bins and Jackson and it sold for $26. This <laughs> Red Hat Society um, necklace sold for $14. I got this in a Goodwill blue box and um, I don't know. I don't know why I listed it, but I did. So <laughs> it didn't take that long to sell, but it took a while. Does that make sense? It didn't take like two years, but it took a couple months. Let's just say that. <coughs> this was a mistake. I should not have bought this top. I think I paid like six bucks for it at um, a thrift store. I was trying to get more stuff for my Christmas collection um, again, like over a year ago. And I didn't end up using it in my Christmas collection. And so it didn't have a cute photo, didn't wasn't modeled. It ended up selling for 12 bucks. Mistake, mistake, mistake. Not a fan of Lucky Brand over here in my closet. This Stitch Fix top, which is like a white top. These pictures were not very great, honestly. You can't really see the top very well. Um, and I feel like that's probably a part of why it took so long to sell. And then also it's just a white button up top. It was really pretty. Uh, but it did end up selling for $25 and the person who bought it was very happy with it. Uh, these light academia like wool style wool style trousers. Um, they were not actual wool so they're easy care. Let's see, they're from like the 1980s. They're by Impressions, made in the USA, size 12. Um, not a modern 12. But anyway, they sold for $32. All right, last sale, and then I'm gonna go before they come in. <laughs> this mud cloth tool dress, I also bought this when I was visiting my mom down in Mississippi. And it was a nice, like, heavyweight dress. It was by the brand Tool. Um, here's the tag. This is like that twee look um, that everyone is talking about, like early mod cloth, um, 2010s. Um, yeah, this is the, the twee thing here. So it's it was like a wool and polyester, heavier weight, um, good for winter if you don't live in a freezing location like I do. And it sold for 30 bucks. So we're gonna call that good. I did have some sales on Thrilling, like four or five. It wasn't that impressive. Um, I did have some sales on eBay. Again, not that impressive. You've just been through the bulk of my sales. January was not my best month, but not bad either for not really doing any work. My mom was visiting. Uh, my kids were out of school for a while. Uh, the kids got sick with colds. Um, we just had a lot going on and so I didn't really work. I've been working on my novel um, and I spent about two weeks doing a big chunk of that. So it's just a lot of stuff going on. And um, I'm finally really getting back into working and listing again. So maybe in February things will pick up even more, even though it's a super short month. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm tired of talking. So thank you so much for watching. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.